Hello, Epic students, and welcome to another internet lesson. My name is Phil, and this morning we are going to jump straight into our lesson about Christmas song studies. As you know, we've been going through some Christmas songs. We're going to do a couple more weeks of that this week and next week. And uh, this week we're going to be talking about two songs that are uh, fun, ones that you know and ones that you love. The first one is Santa Claus is Coming to Town, and the second one is We Three Kings. So uh, as before, we're going to look at the songs, we're going to sing the songs together, we'll look at some of the history, and uh, maybe learn a little bit from the Bible while we're at it. This is fantastic. So let's jump right into our first song, and the first song is Santa Claus is Coming to Town. It's probably one you guys know, and um, well, we'll sing it and then we'll talk about it. Oh, and before we get started, one more thing. I do expect uh, you guys to sing along. This is a participation video. So I want you guys to be singing aloud uh, along with me at home, with you and your parents and your siblings and everybody. Get them all to sing along. All right, here we go. Oh, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list, checking it twice. Gonna find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. Oh, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. All right. That is a fun one. Nice and quick so far. Uh, but there's more to it than meets the eye. So this song on the surface seems like just a fun, you know, sweet kids Christmas song, right? Something about Santa Claus. Well, here's a couple facts about it. First of all, some history. It was written in 1934 by J. Fred Coots and Haven Gillespie, which are two of the coolest songwriter names I think I've ever heard. J. Fred Coots and Haven Gillespie. Um, so they wrote it, but uh, it was in 1934. It was recorded once. Uh, the first ever recording was on a banjo, uh, which is fantastic as well. Um, but then later on in 1934, uh, the song was presented and sung by a man named Eddie Cantor on his radio show. And uh, he took the song and he actually added a couple of verses to it. And this is what made the song popular. This is what it got it out there. Uh, the, the sheet music, which is uh, something that was uh, the songs were tracked by back then. This was, I think, the third best selling sheet music of all time or something along those lines. It was very, very, very popular um, because Eddie Cantor put it on his radio show. So. His lyrics that he added to it, um, they actually go a lot deeper than this. They encourage charitable giving and generosity during the Great Depression. If you guys don't know, the Great Depression was a time in America in the 1930s, late 1920s and, and 1930s, where everyone was poor. No one had jobs. Uh, there was trouble with crops. So farmers were out of work. Um, you know, everyone from businessmen to families, everyone was struggling at the time. And there was a lot of homelessness, a lot of poor people out on the streets, and it was it was a really, really rough time. And so Eddie, Eddie Cantor, the radio host, added these lyrics to it to encourage people not just to be good like it shows in the song, you better not pout, you better not cry, you know, all this, these things that it says in the song normally, but to give to others, to share your wealth, to share the money uh, that you have. And so let's look at the lyrics that uh, were part of this early, very popular version of the song. Um, let's see, I'm going to try to play it and sing along here, although I don't know this one as well, so bear with me. It goes like this. Oh, the season is near for happiness time. Gotta bring cheer with every last dime. Santa Claus is coming to town. We've got to dig deep and cover the list. Gotta see that nobody is missed. Santa Claus is coming to town. Let's keep the home fires burning. Let's give without a pause. Let's prove to those less fortunate that there is a Santa Claus. Oh, the joy will be yours. A wonderful day, knocking on doors and shouting hooray. 
Santa Claus is coming to town. Man, I love that. That changes everything about this song. It makes it about uh, sharing what we have with people who are less fortunate, with being kind and generous to those around us, which is uh, very much uh, a, a Christian um, attitude that we should have, right? To take care of the poor and, and, and those less fortunate, to put our neighbor before ourselves. I bet you never thought that Santa Claus is coming to town uh, contained uh, such kind of deep and, and meaningful spiritual truth there. But it does. So that's Santa Claus is coming to town. I love it. So up next, We Three Kings. Now this one, uh, you probably know, but probably only know maybe the first verse. There's actually a lot of verses to this one, but uh, you'll definitely know the parts. You can sing along here with the parts that you know, and I got the lyrics up there for the parts that you don't. Okay, here we go. This is We Three Kings. We three kings of Orient are Bearing gifts we travel so far Field and fountain, moor and mountain Following yonder star Oh, star of wonder, star of night Star with royal beauty bright Westward leading, still proceeding Guide us to thy perfect light Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never over us all to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading still. Proceeding, guide us to a perfect light. So there's a few more verses. We're going to sing the rest of them as well, but I'm going to kind of just sing the verses back to back, and then we'll do the chorus one more time at the end. It goes like this. Frankincense to offer have I, incense on the deity nigh, prayer and praising all men raising worship him god on high next one myrrh is mine myrrh is mine it's bitter perfume breath of life of gathering gloom soaring sighing bleeding dying sealed in a stone cold tomb and the last one here Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God in sacrifice. Hallelujah, hallelujah, sounds to the earth and skies. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading still proceed. Woo! That's a lot of verses and a lot of stuff that I probably didn't know. Uh, well, I know I didn't know, and probably you guys didn't know before we did that this morning. Um, there's a lot of verses to it, but it's very important. You might notice a pattern in there that there's a verse at the beginning, a verse at the end, and then there's three verses in the middle, gold, frankincense, and myrrh are the theme of each verse, which might sound familiar if you know the story of the wise men coming to visit Jesus. Let's look at We Three Kings. So first of all, We Three Kings was written by John Henry Hopkins Jr. in 1857, right in the middle of the 1800s. This is pretty great. I did not know this before. It was written for a Christmas pageant at his church in Pennsylvania. Yeah, this was, you know, we did a Christmas program last year at church. We just played other people's songs, but it would be like if we had done an original song during that. He wrote it as a Christmas pageant. And it was written for there to be three male performers to play three wise men, and they would all sing the first verse together. Then each one of them would take turns singing one of the verses about gold, frankincense, or myrrh, one person each one. And then they would all sing the last verse together. And uh, it's really cool. I mean, it's it definitely, you can see when you read see the whole song as a whole, um, you know, how it was meant to be laid out like that for a Christmas pageant at church, uh, which I just I had no idea. I'd never knew the history of the story behind it. But now what I want to do is look at a little bit more into what it has to say about this song in the Bible and how accurate is this song to what's in the Bible. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to have you guys get your Bibles out 
And uh, like we do a lot of times, I'm going to have you in a moment. You're going to pause the video. You're going to read the Bible verse and then come back uh, to the video. So first, what I want you guys to do is start with uh, the verse at the top of the verses at the top, Matthew 2, 1 through 12. Um, and I want you guys to read that. This is the part in the Bible where it talks about the wise men coming to see Jesus. So go ahead and uh, read that together with your, your parents, your siblings, whatever. Pause that. Pause the video and then come back. Uh, go ahead and pause now. And welcome back. So that's the entirety of what it says about the wise men in the Bible. And you might notice that some of the things that we traditionally think about the wise men are not in that part of the Bible. For instance, um, you know, it talks about we three kings, right? Um, we all often talk about the wise men being kings and there was three of them. Well, nowhere in that passage does it say there was three and no one there, nowhere in that passage says they were king. They were kings. They were wise men is what it says, or magi, depending on uh, the part of the translation that you're looking at. Um, but yeah, they, it doesn't say that. Now, there's a couple of reasons we make some of these assumptions, um, it, because one of the things it does talk about is they brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So in the, in the song, when it says bearing gifts and it talks about the gold, frankincense, and myrrh, that's accurate. And because there's three items mentioned that were brought, that's kind of where we get the idea that there were three kings. But there could have been 10 kings that brought, you know, lots of gold and frankincense and myrrh. There could have been two kings that brought you know, one of them brought two things or whatever. I mean, there's any number of combinations. It doesn't specify. The idea is just people brought stuff to worship Jesus and they brought the finest things they could find because they knew that he was extra special, not just any normal little baby. Um, and they came from far and it does talk about them following the star, right? And they came from the east um, and east of, you know, where he was in Jerusalem or in Bethlehem near Jerusalem. And so somewhere in the east in Persia or you know, uh, elsewhere in points east from there. And so those parts are accurate. It says they came there. It talks a lot about in that verse you read, the verses you read about them speaking with Herod and and all that part. But um, yeah, so the song, you know, it checks out pretty much. There are some assumptions, um, uh, some traditions that we follow, but there's actually some more parts in the Bible that kind of uh, point towards it. In the Old Testament, as you guys know, we've talked a lot about how the Old Testament, the prophecies and the stories and the way that God uh, worked with his people uh, all throughout the Old Testament points towards Jesus. All of it is pointing towards the story of him coming and uh, living and dying and living again, resurrecting. And so um, we're going to look at some more verses in the Bible here. Um, and there's three of them here. So you can break them up with, you know, family uh, with your siblings or parents or whatever, and kind of take turns reading these. And each one of these kind of has a little bit to do with this Christmas story and a little bit maybe about the wise men too. There's some interesting ones here. So when I say pause, go ahead and read these and then come back to the video and pause now. And welcome back. So what you just read is kind of amazing. First of all, let's look at Isaiah 66. Um, this is just one of the many prophecies in the Old Testament, again, that point towards Jesus. And that one specifically talks about uh, people bringing him gold and frankincense, right? Um, and uh, there being camels around. It talks about in Psalm uh, 72. This is an interesting one. It's David who's writing a psalm about his son Solomon. He's kind of wishing him well. He's, he's praying for Solomon to do uh, great things and for people to bring him honor and stuff. But it's not just, if you look at it from a broader perspective, it's not just him writing about Solomon. He's talking about his great, great, great grandson, uh, however many greats, Jesus, right? It's talking about how uh, people are going to come from far to worship him and they're going to bring him gifts. And, and it even talks about, you know, some other kings and royalty. So it could be something that points towards maybe they were kings. We're, we're not sure, right? Um, but it's it's definitely, uh, you know, some evidence to that. Um, and finally, in Isaiah 9, 6 through 7, this is just a, a classic. Uh, it points, it's an exact description of Jesus being born um, all the way back in Isaiah in the Old Testament. And uh, it's just so amazing to see that God paints this picture, this story all the way through that all points to Jesus in the end. Um, there's so much going on in the Old Testament, but ultimately that's what it's all about. So that is pretty awesome. Um, it's a great song. And even though there's, you know, traditions and things like that, that maybe not be exactly from the Bible, that's okay. As long as we recognize that and understand that and know that, um, man, there is so much truth to be found in this song. Um, and there's a lot more to go into it that we don't have time for this morning, but uh, hopefully you guys will kind of look into the lyrics more and get even more out of it. And that's going to do it for this morning, you guys. We have our doggy bag. This is the part of the lesson I hope you take home. If you miss everything else, this is one thing I hope you remember, that the Old Testament is all about Jesus. That's what all the stuff points towards. 
And uh, that's why we we celebrate the Advent season and we sing all these Christmas songs is it all points towards Jesus. So that's your doggy bag for this morning. And finally, your impress your ride fact for this morning. This is, you know, if you want to impress your parents and let them know you were paying attention to the video, did you know no one knows how many wise men there were? You could tell that to your parents and they will be impressed. That's right. Nobody knows for sure. Um, but it's an interesting thing to look at and to study. And that is our lesson for this morning, you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. We will be back again next week doing uh, two more Christmas songs. It'll be the final week uh, before Christmas, which is so exciting. Um, make sure before you go, check out Mr. Scott's videos on the other part of this page. And I uh, love you guys, and we'll see you soon. Merry Christmas!